Good afternoon, it's Charles here from Charles N Photography. Today I'm going to do a very short tutorial to show you how to edit lightning photos on Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now we're using the desktop version of Adobe Lightroom CC. If you have the internet version, some of these sliders might be slightly different. So when we're shooting lightning, using your shutter button is basically pointless because by the time we see the lightning and press the shutter button down it's gone if you've got some money you can buy what a lot of people like using a pluto trigger a mate of mine uses it and by using the pluto trigger it means the camera will only take a shot when it detects lightning this little app is amazing for do for doing this for me I'm old school. I just use a, a cable release and I don't just press the trigger when I see lightning. I set the camera to 30 seconds or if I'm using an infometer to around 45 to 50 seconds and I set the camera up into continuous shooting and lock the, the shutter release. So it means that every 30 seconds if I'm using just a standard cable release or if I'm using the intervalometer on manual mode I can get up to around 50 seconds any more than 50 seconds I start getting quite a bit of digital noise in the in the photo like little red dots and all that so I stay away from it but around 45 seconds for most cameras you're saving 15 seconds per photo so for every two photos you've taken at 45 seconds you've saved one photo if you had been taking it 30 seconds. Now the reason I like shooting longer exposures is one, I can get the ISO level lower and two, I have more chances of getting lightning on each frame. So that it's, it's always a good idea. So we're quickly going to run through one set of photos. This set was actually taken in 2018 with my Nikon D5500 which I used to own at that time I used to use it, do it for a lot of time lapses and all that now I just use my Nikon D7500 for it so we're going to edit one photo and then I'll show you how to edit a group of photos together blend the four photos together so that the photo has more impact because it's very hard to get more than one or two lightning shots per photo so joining four photos of lightning together you actually get a much more impressive photo now of course you do need a very sturdy tripod when you're doing this so keep that in mind as well so let's get cracking so i'm actually screen recording this so that as the video plays you'll actually see what i'm actually doing on lightroom so here's my four photos that we're going to be working with i select the first one that i want I go into the develop module and I'll choose the Takenia 11 to 20 profile. Now this is how the image looked like on the night. So the first thing I do is adjust my white balance. And with the white balance color picker now, it doesn't see color like we do. You're actually choosing with the picker a neutral gray area so down here in this part here it actually looks very close to a neutral gray so if I click on it you can actually see all of a sudden the photos changed and it's telling me that the white balance is 4150 K's Kelvins which is a little bit warmer than fluorescent I'll actually drop it down just that little bit now because I just like a little bit more more blue in there. Yeah. Actually, no, I'll lift it up. That looks much better. Now, before I go any further in editing, I do want to make sure that the horizon is straight. Now, one point here I should mention is that if you're using a lens like the Takenia 11 to 20 or any ultra wide lens you have to make sure 
that's your camera that the horizon is correct because there is distortion in these lenses so if your horizon is too crooked when it distorts it'll actually distort on the corners and you can actually bring back the horizon straight but you'll actually see the distortion won't be accurate so spend a couple of minutes and make sure that when you're setting up that you're getting a straight horizon so let's see how good my horizon was well looking at this my horizon is dead straight which I'm pretty happy click done the exposure is about right now one thing I should mention is that when we're shooting lightning you don't want to set up your photo for a correctly exposed photo at night so uh, this is something you have to be very mindful of when you're you're setting up at night for lightning photos you actually want to be shooting a dark frame because when the lightning hits it's actually going to light up the sky and if you've shot for a correctly exposed night image you'll get a whiteout like you'll lose all the detail in your lightning shot so pay attention to that reduce the exposure and when the lightning hits you'll actually get a correctly exposed image which is what I did on this photo so I'm pretty happy with that now on this night I was actually shooting at 30 seconds the f-stop was f4.5 and I was zoomed out zoomed in at 20 mils and I was shooting at ISO 100 so now we're going to, to adjust the highlights shadows whites and blacks I prefer to start with my blacks and I'm using a Windows PC so if I hit touch the alt key down and grab the black slider if I push it to the left you can actually see all this color coming in what we do want is just white that's it so I'm pretty happy with that now the whites if I hold it down I should end up with a black screen so if I go to the left all the way down I've still got a little bit of lightning in there you'll always have a little bit so I'm going to go about halfway come up to the highlights and there you go I've got a black screen now that looks fairly good now the shadows I find that I tell people when I teach people Lightroom that the shadows and the highlights is re really user defined like how much shadows do you want in your image how much you want to cut your highlights down so if we up the shadows a bit this is down to zero up a little bit so we'll take it up to about 22 that looks a bit the top up here is quite dark but you gotta understand thunderstorms and all that at night clouds can be very dark so we won't worry too much about the top here now that I've done adjusted the middle part here we come down to presence where we've got texture clarity and dehaze now if I add a bit of clarity I'm actually going to define the the lightning a bit more you have to be very careful when you're using dehaze dehaze is very good but it's a like a double-edged sword so again if I press the alt key on dehaze I've got a widescreen and I can add dehaze until I start seeing now obviously I've gone overboard here and you can actually see all this color so if I bring it back down until there is very little dehaze there is very little color on the screen you can see now it's a little bit more punchy if I re take it all away it's a bit soft up it a little bit that's it so it actually cuts out because at night in the storm you could have a bit of rain a bit of moisture in the air so that's actually going to affect how clearly you see the lightning so using dehaze is a very good way of cleaning up the photo so you can increase the saturation of certain colors by going into HSL so we're in saturation now we're in saturation and you can see here there's all the colors and sliders but 
nature doesn't give you just one color it's always a mix so I prefer to use the little adjustment tool up here drag it onto my screen and by holding the left hand left mouse button down if I slide it down I'm actually reducing the saturation of the color if I'm sliding it up and you can actually see in the sliders up there that they're moving if I slide it up I'm actually increasing the saturation if I really go overboard that looks shocking but we'll bring it back down a little bit you know it looks a little bit better and you can actually see we've got we've upped the saturation on blue and on the purple but if we touch saturation we've also got to adjust the luminance now I come back into the same area here where I was playing and if I bump it up a little bit that actually looks quite nice a bit more impact to it now if we want to see we finish with this we'll click done and if we click down here it says cycles between before and after views we click it there the left side here is what we actually started with the right is what we're up to now and you can see the the vast difference in the photos so was it about the video's been going for about 10 minutes so you can see it doesn't take too long once you know how to do it I've been editing photos for quite a long time so I know what I'm doing but I just want to show these small videos to show you that how good Lightroom is and how good it is to actually shoot in RAW because if you're shooting in JPEG you're not going to get this sort of detail basically a JPEG for me is a finished product I tell people when I teach them you shoot in JPEG you've got clay vase that's already gone in the kiln you shoot raw you've got the mud in your hand and you can mold the photo to whatever you want and then you export that photo to JPEG to TIFF to whatever you want so the hint is you shoot in raw so we're really happy with that so now I'm actually going to stop so I'm pretty happy with with what I've got there there is no real reason to go any more than this some people go overboard and they oversaturate images I've done quite a bit of work to this but it's still very lifelike and that is the key to a photo lifelike don't wear tinted glasses you know I wear glasses because I don't see too well when I'm editing but I joke with people sometimes it's like some people have got tinted glasses on and they oversaturate their images so don't be one of them so now I'm actually going to stop this video and we'll do a second video that will actually be in the link description below and I'll show you how to merge four photos together through a program called star stack and get much more impact than just a single photo so thank you for watching this small video if you like it give me a like subscribe to my youtube channel it will certainly help me so for now it's goodbye